Welcome back. A lot of interesting economic news and reviews this past week. Let's talk about it with Kirk Penho from Crane's Detroit Business back with us again and from the Detroit News columnist Daniel House. Kirk, I want to start with you because uh, you and Bill Shea wrote uh, extensively about District Detroit a couple of months ago. Then we see it spilled out in a national forum, but very much in keeping with what you guys found when you were looking down there. And I guess the question becomes, do we just need to be patient with what was promised or are these promises not being kept when we look at all we thought this was going to be not a stadium but a neighborhood that happened to have a stadium in it <laughs> right so the original plan that was that's coming up upon, upon its five-year uh, unveiling anniversary um, in July uh, was originally slated to be 45 to 50 blocks of mixed-use development that was going to sprout up concurrently over the course of several years right. obviously that has not happened um, there's really no way to debate that so the question becomes what happens now is there a mechanism by which the city can start holding them accountable um, does more public Public pressure add to sort of the urgency behind uh, 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 getting some of these projects out of the ground or uh, completed. There has been a little bit of work done on some of these historic buildings so right, far, right. but um, certainly not uh, with the speed with which the Illiches were promising back in July of 2014. These neighborhoods had names given to them even, uh, for you, and, and I think that that's why a lot of people me included, thought mm -hmm. that this is really bigger than a stadium, Daniel. You did a, a commentary that uh, ran yesterday on Michigan Radio, and you're, you're taking the Illiches to task a bit, too. Well, I, yeah, I think that this makes this makes development in Detroit more difficult for everyone. Uh, whether you're Ford Motor Company and the, and the train station, Dan Gilbert, some of his big projects, uh, Fiat Chrysler, they're all having to deal with neighborhood groups under the the guise of the community benefit benefit agreements and and that's fine uh, but I think there's a skepticism that is injected into the process because people look back and say well but the Illiches didn't do this they didn't do that and that makes it harder and a heavier lift for everybody and and frankly this can be solved by one entity and that is the Illich organization uh, they know why they haven't done certain things uh, and I think also finally I do think that there's real frustration in the business community and in City Hall that and to some way to some ways that the Illich organization has played them for chumps. Interesting, Kirk, there were some people saying this past week, look, you can't just expect this all to be on the Illiches. Other people needed to kind of, were hope the idea was that they would sort of get in on this, and yet the Illiches own most of the footprint, so it is kind of hard for somebody else to make something happen, especially where these... It kind of breaks my heart when I drive down Cass and I see a $45 fee for a parking lot that's been put in there. <laughs> well, so it's it's also important to note that that they were able to bring in, at least initially uh, about two years ago, uh, a couple different, um, uh, uh, I guess you can call them partner developers. Mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. of them that was responsible for probably 80% of the units that were that were unrolled in the first phase of the residential launch um, sort of unceremoniously bowed out about a year ago um, due to uh, a couple different factors, including one of which is uh, just sort of an, uh, what, what's perceived as a micromanagement on part of the Illich organization in order to get some of these things done. Yeah, so it's, yeah. not, it's not that um, there aren't groups that uh, weren't initially willing to work with the Illiches. It's, it's that, uh, based on what we've reported, they've been driven out. Yeah. Uh, you saw the, 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 the story. The Illiches seemed to think it was a hit job. Was it a fair representation of what's going on? Showing pictures of what's going on in the schools... Uh, and, and, and in some of the neighborhoods is maybe... Well, I think you got to be careful about linking it to bankruptcies and all sorts of other things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, and a lot of times people come in and they just kind of look at the picture and they put it all together and, and yeah. put two and two together and get seven. Uh, that's not necessarily the way it happened. But, yeah, I think it's important to note in the con all of this context is the Illiches were investing in Detroit before it was cool. Absolutely. They were the, they were the trailblazers, uh, really. Um, Sitting there all alone for and, a long time. And yes. Exactly right. And, and this was kind of going to be the the capping uh, the capstone but there's on what a thing done. about you know it, about uh, expectation management you know don't show me something that I you know don't show oh, me absolutely. lobster if I'm gonna have absolutely. a hamburger and that's the, the, that that do, do what you say you're gonna do what you're gonna say yes uh, let's talk about the, the other big news of the uh, Waymo and Rivian both uh, different pieces of the same kind of puzzle though mm -hmm. uh, both felt to me to be really big pieces of news for a city that still wants to stay the mobility capital yeah if you got a half billion dollar investment into Rivian and then another uh, 
you know, 10 plus million investment into the actual city of Detroit by Waymo, that's obviously good news. There's a lot of movement on part of the, the avian EV front and that's uh, only uh, spurring more momentum. The symbolism here cannot be overstated. Uh, you know, Waymo, uh, which is of course the Google self-driving unit, uh, is, is going to be assembling product in the city of Detroit. They originally were going to be out in Wixom, as, we, as my colleague Nolan Finley reported on yeah. Friday. Um, but Dan Gilbert got involved, uh, sent a note to John Kraftchik, who he met actually here a couple years ago, said, hold off. Uh, they gave us a week. Gave us a week. They, they went to their friends at American Axle, blah, 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 one thing after another. They're coming to Detroit. Uh, it's huge. The Rivian deal is also huge. This has been the hottest electric vehicle company in the auto show circuit in the, in the past year, uh, doing truck a truck and an SUV some, sometime next year. What's really interesting, very mature leadership, and they understand that to do what they need to do, they need the help of the traditional auto industry. I've only got about 30, 40 seconds left. How, how worried should we be about uh, what's going on in Eastern market these days? We watched uh, the Russell Street Deli, which is a, an institution there, announced last week that they're getting kicked out. And we hear, I've heard, you know, after the uh, after the Nelsons came in and took over a lot of it, we've heard a lot of people worried that it won't be able to keep its character. There's a lot of concern about that. That's that's certainly true. Um, there's a ba back and forth, obviously, between the tenant and the landlord here, and that's something that we don't often get sort of this insider view of, which a lot of the mm -hmm. media did because we were provided a 30-minute recording of a meeting between the landlord and the tenant, which the tenant obviously knew he was being recorded. Right, right. So um, we have that working for us uh, in, in the media, but you know how it actually plays out for the broader Eastern market. You know The Nelsons yeah. say that they want to keep the identity of the market, but we'll see. Let's hope. Yeah, got to get to a break. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.